Tested team, welcome. I have a brand new lens I've been playing with that I wanted to share with you today. I believe this lens is released today. I don't usually hit embargoes on these kind of things, but I was able to get my hands on a pre-release model for about three weeks uh, leading up to this review, which I'll then be setting this back. This is the Laua Proteus 2X Anamorphic Zoom Lens. Um, I'm shooting this right now on the, on the Laua Proteus 26-45. Uh, on the 45 end of the range and then the longer side is the 45 to 85 so you get another 40 mil on that longer side. Um, both of these lenses I got came in the PL mount uh, which I then adapted to the E mount for the Sony FX6, the RF mount for the Canon R5 and the Micro Four Thirds for the GH5 but on its release I believe all of these mounts can be changed out um, through different uh, series L series EF. Uh, I'm gonna list them all here, but you can order these in any kind of interchangeable mount you want. And you can also do something very cool, and that is order them in the type of um, optical coating to give you a certain color flare that you would like. These, denoted by this bronze stripe here, are the amber flares. Now, those of you who know anamorphics know that they are they are big flare lenses, um, big uh, uh, horizontal flares that run across the screen and typically they have been like blue or silver. You think of JJ Abrams, you think of that silver or that blue streak that runs across. Um, these lenses can be uh, custom ordered to have different colors. Again, this is the amber. I really like this like warm amber flare that this lens gives you. But if you want to go for that more JJ Abrams style, you can go for that blue or you can do like a neutral if you just want something a little more silver. Um, and with this 2X anamorphic, you really get that stretch across the screen because again, the image is being squeezed and 2X is on the larger end of that squeeze. And so with 2X, you're getting a lot of squeeze and then when that's de-squeezed out, those lens flares really uh, flare out. These lenses are robust without feeling too, too heavy. Sometimes anamorphics can tend to be a little bit more on the heavier, tankier side because of all those elements. This, this lens has about 20 elements inside of it, meaning there's a lot of glass, there's a lot of things going on there. So these lenses can weigh upwards to five. I think the Atlas lenses weigh about five pounds. These run at about 3.38, 3.30 pounds, um, which makes, her on, makes them on the heavier side of lenses, but for anamorphics, not so much. I think that's important context. Some of these, some of these numbers here, especially the close focus and the weight, um, they don't sound very impressive when you look at other lenses that aren't uh, anamorphics, but within the anamorphic family, some of these things will be pretty important. So a 3.3, I think the lightest anamorphic lenses, like the Hawk V series, those weigh at about 2.5, and those are actually like known to be very, very lightweight lenses. So these lenses kind of sit somewhere in the middle of being not too heavy, not too light, just somewhere in the middle. So, you know, take care of, you know, giving your rail support when you use these lenses, you know, damage your mount, especially when you're using things like Canon EF or L series mounts where um, they're not used to this much weight. I always tend to like to use a little bit of support when I'm using those sort of mounts. The PL is a nice, strong locking system. And so you might not have as much trouble there, but um, three pounds is usually the point where I start putting some lens supports on rails to hold it up from, uh, you know, bending that mount down. Um, what else we got here? The geared three ring system has some nice teeth to it. Uh, it locked into my follow focus and uh, control rigs pretty easily. The focus throw is about 270, 270 degrees, which is typical of cinema lenses, uh, but a little bit far for single operator stuff. Uh, if you're you know, holding the camera yourself and the lens, you have a lot of room to really rack that focus. And 270 can be a little bit much for the single operator, um, but works really well when someone is uh, running focus for you. They have a lot of leeway there. So that's something to be considered of if you are gonna be doing a lot of running guns, single person shooters, um, you're gonna have a lot of uh, room there on the focus throws. So you might wanna invest in a follow focus system if you don't already have one. So speaking of focus, let's talk about two pretty important things on the focus front for anamorphics, and that is the uh, close focus and also the focus breathing on this lens. Now, anamorphics tend to typically not have a great close focus. Uh, usually it's just a trade off for the style of lens, for that, that character, what you're going for. Anamorphics um, just don't work well with close focus types of lenses. And so what people tend to end up doing is using uh, close focus diopters 
on the front um, as a filter so that they get those close focuses. This one actually has a little bit, uh, the, the wide side has a little bit more of a close focus than other anamorphics that I use. The close focus here on the wide side, on the 26 to 45, is one foot seven inches. So about a foot and a half for a close focus, which again is not super macro. It's not a focus, it's not a close focus type of lens, but that's actually on the um, more generous side of that close focus. On the wider range here, the 45 to 85, you have two foot 11 inches. So close to three feet, which is more typical of, of anamorphics. These have a 77 mil thread on the end of them, which is very common in the Super 35. Even some full frames use 77 or 82. Uh, fil uh, filtration threads on the end of them here. And so if you were to get these and add this to your kit, I would say probably get a close focus diopter 77 mil, pretty common in your rig, just to give it a little bit of versatility. Um, the 77 is great. 82, if you have a lot of, I have a lot of 82 filtration. I have actually, I've stepped down. You can use step up rings or step down rings. I've stepped down from 82 to 77, no problem. Focus breathing is another big characteristic for lenses, especially lenses with a lot of character. And that is when you are rack focusing or changing your focus on your, your lens. And you'll notice a sort of perceived zoom happening on the, um, on the areas of the frame that are focusing in and out. This is very much an aesthetic choice, whether you would like that or not. Sometimes it's nice to add a little bit of attention towards what you're rack focusing to, and sometimes you want something really clean. These land on the much cleaner side. I've, um, across both ranges of these zoom lenses, I found very minimal focus breathing as I tested those out. So if you're looking for something pretty clean, um, something that allows you to just rack focus without calling any attention to it, um, these lenses do that for you. Then there's a discussion of parfocal versus verifocal zoom lenses. A lot of people use still lenses for video purposes. We do that as well. Um, it's becoming much more common. And still zoom lenses don't really need to keep the main, they don't need to maintain focus as they zoom in and out because typically you're using autofocus and you snap a picture and you zoom and snap a picture and it, it autofocuses along the way. Um, but with video, you notice that as you zoom, you kind of lose focus. That focus that focus plane changes around as that focal range changes. Um, with cinema lenses, that's typically something that you do not want. You want your focal range, you want your focal plane to maintain consistency throughout the entire, entire zoom range. Um, I didn't see anything on any other data sheets or marketing that said that these are par focal lenses, but I did not see any sort of focus plane changes as I zoomed around these lenses. So for all intents and purposes, I think these are par focal, but I would just want to double check with Laua um, after this video is done, but it looked pretty good to me. I did not need to worry about changing up focus as I was zooming across the range. Their T-stops open to 2.9 to 22. Um, that is a non-clicked aperture that runs at about 42 degrees for that focus, uh, for the aperture change. Um, I typically do not shoot most lenses wide open. They just tend to, to fall apart a little bit in different ways. I did notice a little bit of softening and some distortion, a little bit of uh, uh, unwanted flare characteristics for me in that 2.9 range. Um, not only was it flaring up, but I also was getting like some vertical flares that I wasn't quite a huge fan of, but that seemed to all go away at about four. Four to 5.6 was like my sweet spot. I noticed a lot of nice creamy background, bokeh oval stuff happening at four while maintaining that sharp, crisp, contrasty um, center area for these these lenses. And then I got the nice kind of fall off on the edges that um, really gave the, this lens some character. And that character kept at four to 5.6. And then eight, you start getting real clean um, and a really deep depth of field. So I found my sweet spot of four to 5.6. I rarely went to 2.9. I shot a big bunch of tests on 2.9, but ended up just not really liking that look too much. Uh, so I stuck with four, which is typical to what I tend to do with a lot of these lenses that um, start to lose a little bit of clarity in their wide open ranges. So I shot these on three different projects, a musical performance. I did like a promo piece for a gym and I shot this a little bit in the tested shop. and. I do just say the musical performance stuff, of course, anamorphics, they just lend to that sort of hard light everywhere look uh, really well. I really like this in Adam's Cave. It just added some extra warmth to Adam's Cave and really gave some creamy background. I mean, I just, I love, I love the oval bokeh. I love what it does to backgrounds. So thanks Laua for sending these out for me to play with. And thank you guys for checking out this video and allowing me to test out more gear and share these tests with you and hopefully give you um, a better idea of what these new products that are coming out 
are because there's a lot of new exciting lenses coming out and hopefully this will inform you a little bit to help make your decision on any investment purchases on glass which is always a good investment in my book thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time on the tested team youtube channel